Metro Service produces and certifies water and heating meters. It imports parts from China and exports finished products around the region. Ruble fluctuations are making it harder to do business. Our products are already becoming more expensive for foreign markets, so we're trying to find a balance. We're trying to buy foreign currency while the ruble is strong, but it isn't clear. There is so much volatility. Maybe in a week the dollar will be 50, maybe 80 rubles, and you can't guess. These devices work to the highest level of accuracy, but they can't predict the rate of the Russian ruble. Usually a currency reflects the overall health of a country's economy. That is no longer the case here. When Russia launched its so-called special military operation and sanctions hit, the central bank took steps to prop up the ruble. Limits were imposed on the selling of rubles, while major exporters were forced to buy them. This created artificial demand for the currency, but inadvertently, sanctions have also contributed to the ruble's strength. The measures restricted Russia's imports, but so far they haven't made a dent in Russia's lucrative energy exports. Ruble is now almost purely driven by trade flows, and these trade flows are in a huge surplus for the Russia. Exports is still quite large, both in terms of prices and in terms of volumes. Uh, even given a discount which is made for uh, Russian commodity exports, prices are still a little bit higher than they were a year ago. Experts believe the ruble has now passed its peak. The central bank cut interest rates almost to pre-war levels, and the ruble began to weaken. But it still remains stronger than it was for most of the last two years. If energy is the next target of sanctions, then the ruble may start to reflect the troubled picture of Russia's economy. Julia Chapman, CGTN, Moscow.